This is a video about the J Marketing approach to creating websites and high converting um, advertising online. Now, we've written a book about this, but the standard principle is that there is a formula that we follow that helps people to make decisions. And so I'm going to talk about that in this video and also explain it in terms of the design principles that we use. So what this studied scientific principle says is that when customers are making a buying decision, there are effectively three things. Well, there's four, but we'll call it three for design purposes that influence that. Firstly, how clear is the value offer? I.e., how clear is it what problem you solve for them. So, if we were selling vacuum cleaners, it might be uh, remove all dust or re remove more dust and germs than any other vacuum on the market. So that would appeal to people's sense of we get rid of dust and germs, so we're helping you keep your family healthier. Or it could be keep your family healthy by and then the strap line. So we're very clearly solving the problem. Now that is common. Most advertising agencies will talk about that, or at least good ones. What they don't talk about is the other side of the equation. The other side of the equation, the reason people don't buy, and this is online, offline, in every part of your life, is two factors. Anxiety and friction. I'll let those sink in for a second, because they're very, very closely related, but they're different. Why do you get anxious in the buying decision cycle? Think about when you were at a store last time, and you were like, oh, you know, that fits but it doesn't quite fit right, or will it shrink, or, gee, I don't know, there's just something that, uh, it's not quite right. That's anxiety in the buying process. And those are things that a good salesperson, or in our instance, a good website, can overcome. Imagine if that same salesperson who was helping you and you were thinking, will it shrink, goes, actually, sir, this shirt is specifically made of a compound which does not shrink. doesn't matter if you add heat or cold. And in fact, we give you a lifetime guarantee. All you have to do is come back. We'll give you a brand new one or your money back if it does. That's how confident we are. Now, if that was your anxiety in the buying process, you'd probably buy that t-shirt because you've overcome it. Um, and we, have, we feel the same way about a lot of purchase decisions. So... In our design principle, we're trying to overcome those things. I'm going to talk about how we do that in this design. I've deliberately chosen this one very, very soon. The other thing is friction. Now, friction is slightly different in that friction is about uh, something just doesn't feel right. So go back to that same scenario, and the salesperson is like rushing you through the sale. So you buy it, you buy it, you buy it. Come on, we're going to buy it now. Should I put it on the front desk? Instantly, you're going to go into fight or flight. It doesn't feel good. Um, in filling out forms, for instance, if we don't know why we're filling out the form, or will I be spammed, that's causing friction. We're unlikely to fill it in. Um, what we want to do is remove all friction, make it feel as safe, as smooth, as easy as possible. What people don't talk about when it comes to the buyer decision cycle is they think that we say, okay, I need to buy uh, a watch. I need to buy a watch. And so they think that people will look for the watch that looks the best and does what they want it to do, and then just buy the best one. That is not how human decision making works. We work on emotions. Very, very rarely do we make rational decisions. We make emotional decisions. And so how we feel about a purchase decision is how we buy. <coughs> so let's say we're evaluating watches and we find this watch and we really like it and at the last second there's just a little too much friction in the process. Well, what do we do? Do we try to resolve that? Do we drop by back and buy our second most favourite? No. What consumers tend to do is nothing. 
they drop out of the buyer decision cycle altogether. And when they do re-enter it, they're going to re-enter right at the start. And they'll do all the evaluation, get all new products to compare, and they'll go back through it. I know with smartwatches, which is not how I intended to talk about this, but I will, I've gone back and done the smartwatch research at least 10 times because they don't quite have the features that I want. And so I keep thinking, oh, this is getting too hard, and I go back out. All right, so now I've talked about the theory. How do we apply that to web design? People on websites, on average, spend about three seconds on each page, and they have seven of your competitors open. So if we accept that, then how we influence this and how we influence the buying decision cycle can be reasonably confidently manipulated through smart design principles. The very first thing, and we don't always control this with our clients, is look and feel. Now, we know certain things about how the human brain responds. So if there's too much text, if it's too hard to read, if the images are garish, any of those things, it's a red flag sign. It's a runaway, this is a poisonous flower in the jungle sort of scenario. So there's certain best practices that we follow, bold colors, good spacing, etc. This actually isn't perfect because it's on a wide monitor, but it would resize better if it was a smaller monitor. This was designed for smaller monitors for a specific reason. If it feels good and it feels safe straight off the cuff, we have what we call a hot cognition. Now what's really interesting about a hot cognition is that it is totally irrational. Studies have been done and they've shown that if you ask a patient, or a patient, a, a person, to hold their hands out, put a button in front of them and say, now press the button with your hand. With the electrodes hooked up to your head, scientists know which hand you'll use to press the button before you do. That's important, isn't it? If you really think about it in the context of hot cognitions, because it means that our brain is making snap decisions without our rational mind kicking in. So that first, whatever it is, fraction of a second is crucially important. Our subconscious mind, our brain, is making a decision of whether it likes this or not, and whether it feels warm towards it. So as we click through seven different sites and give them each three seconds, our brain is making these decisions for us. We're not actually conscious of them. And so the design, the very first thing is, ooh, what's happening? Hmm, a video started playing, no problem, I've sorted it out. So our design principle, the first thing to do is to make it feel safe, make it feel easy. That is what, and, and big brand. That's what creates the hot cognition in the first place. Then, out of those seven, the person who's reading will narrow it down to one, two, or three, and he'll actually read those pages. Now again, they don't just go, okay, now I'm going to learn everything about this website. They're very selective. They still only have a very limited amount of time. So this is the most important section on the entire website, what we call the hero area or above the fold. As an interesting aside, above the fold is an old newspaper term because newspapers, of course, are too big, so you kind of fold them like that. So above the fold refers to the area that you can actually read without scrolling. Now, there is a very, very clear trick to this. And you'll see that if you look at J Marketing Designs, we have different variations and layouts, but essentially they follow the same principle. A very clear, largest text on the page headline that talks about the outcome that we generate or the problem that we solve. They should be the same thing. A strap line, which kind of says either who it's for or how we do it. And usually some sort of supporting information that's very short, sharp and easy to read. These are kind of benefits which differentiate this product. We'll also have very clear next steps. And we know that having some sort of inquiry form in the top right hand corner, this one has some thought behind it, which I'll explain in a second, 
generates about a 30% higher conversion rate. We also try to get proof points down here. Now in this instance, these proof points are our government partners because who doesn't trust the government? Well, that was a terribly worded question, but you get the gist of it. These councils wouldn't partner with some shonky provider of finance. They're only going to partner with really good ones. That's the imp oops, this is what gets people to read more. And the whole goal of this, a certain percentage will inquire right away, but a bigger one is just trying to get them to read the next section. And the next section is simple. Again, big headline, how it works, what it is, and then very readable text. We never work with huge chunks of difficult to read paragraph text because people won't do it. So we keep it very short, sharp, and dot pointy. On average, people will read 26%. Well, actually, it's not average. That's at most. People will read 26% on what's on the page. The average person will. That's where I'm getting confused. The average person will read at most 26% on the page, probably more likely 20%. So imagine that only one in five words is getting read. It tells you a lot about the design structure that you need to use in order to have a very effectively built page. Now, let's talk about these inquiry forms because as you go down, you're gonna see we actually have quite a lot of inquiry forms. Why? Why do we bother doing that? Well, there's actually a lot of science behind this. And that is that people, we fear fearful. We feel fearful. Whereas different parts of the buyer decision cycle we're in, and depending on how much anxiety or friction that we feel, we just might not be comfortable giving up our contact information straight away. So this is a generic download more information box, and it's designed so that people will just fill it in going, yeah, I'd like some more information, no problem. If, however, they've read more about the loan, and they want to find out about one specifically, well then they can fill their details in and they can tell us which one they're interested in. This is a slightly more important because it's assuming they have a project value, uh, you know, I, I need a million dollars, and if they click on upgrade fund, they're likely to get information about upgrade funds. Now in the past, this used to be about particular um, types of finance, like I want to do a, what was it, an energy upgrade, I want to do other stuff. They changed it to this, I don't know how that's impacted it, but you can understand the concept beside it. Now down here, this is an inquiry form. If you look up a address, they'll tell you, ah, oh, it's not available, but you can inquire with the council. But let's look up one that is. Oh, nope. <laughs> I don't know one that is. Maybe Raywood. I actually have no idea. Uh, I'm just making this up. Nope. Okay, so if you get to one which is included, then an inquiry form will come up. And because you've jumped through the hoop of checking availability, now it's more probable that you'll complete the inquiry form to get more information. But maybe that's not good enough for you. Let's go back to a more information. And so what we find is that people download InfoPack, one more go at it. Different people in different points of the buyer decision cycle at different levels of comfort will fill in different forms. And what we try to do is use as much context as possible to make them feel comfortable in doing it. Now there's one more thing that we've done here which is very clever and it helps people to understand why they would inquire and feel safe. And that is success stories. Now I can tell you what does and what does not work. What does not work is just randomly having a slider sliding through with people going, it was great. Why? Well just think about when you look at that. Do you have confidence that that is a real review? No, of course not, because anyone could have written it. When you have a page full of reviews taken from Google and they show the person's face, well, that's different. Humans trust real humans, and if there's 20 of them, we're not going to read them. We simply will not. But we will scan them and say, well, shit, there's 10 or there's 20, and they're real people, and those look like real words they're using. Hmm. Yeah, I think I can trust this. The other way to do it is to write 
case studies or success stories in this case. And what we're trying to do is create businesses like the ones that are going to be reading this. So if you ran a farm, you would probably click on Dairy Farm, Minogue Dairy Farm. And you can read, this is what they were trying to do, this is the upgrade, and this is the financial outcome. They became 90% self-sufficient. Even better than that would be, we paid off the loan in three years and now we're making an extra 200 grand a year because of X. Rye Hotel. If you're a hotel, this is a very well-known hotel um, down on the, the peninsula of, off of Melbourne, Australia. So everyone knows the right hotel. If you're a hotel, hey, here's the opportunity to add solar panels. Another way to do this could have been like solar upgrade, waste upgrade, something else. So if people were thinking about on a product level, they could see how others did it. But this is a real person. This is a real quote. This is a real story and a real outcome. So it gives you confidence that, yeah, I would like the same outcome. Now, one other thing I'll talk about with this, and then I'm going to go across to Zircon, is you will notice in all our websites, we try to minimize the number of pages. Why? User experience. Try to use the least amount of words and the least amount of pages as possible to give the most robust answer. Believe it or not, people don't want to be on the website. They don't want to have to jump around and find the answer to their question. So the best designs map out what are the frictions, the anxieties, or, or in a different way of saying it, the things people want to know, and show it on the page. Let's go across to Zircon so I can show you just a slightly different example of this. These guys do interior fit-outs for, um, for businesses. So they'll do this desk thing, and these lights, and the roof, and all of that, chairs. We've got a different design going live soon, which is even better than this one, if you can believe it. But you'll see the same strategy. Big headline, supporting text, easy to read, next steps. The next steps are how we work. Maybe someone's interested in that. Ideally, that would actually be more uh, outcome driven. And view projects. Now, shouldn't take a huge jump to guess what everyone clicks on, projects. We do have free quote and timeline. I pressed a free quote and timeline. Who doesn't want that? That's why you're on the website. This form could probably be made better by adding a few specifications that are specific to you, but it's still pretty dang good. Let's go down. Recent office fit outs. This is what everyone goes to. Now, why do they go to this? Well, this is human behavior 101. Have you ever noticed that in a busy shopping area, if there is a successful, say, ice cream store, there'll be one or two more successful ice cream stores right nearby. Human behavior. We like safety. And if someone else is being successful doing something, we think we will be. Well, it goes the same when you are choosing design. What you're looking for is, yes, inspiration, but your brain is hardwired to try to do the smart, safe thing. And so when it comes to office design, what's easier than to choose what people have already done? We already do the same thing in interior fashion magazines or clothing fashion. We look at the models wearing it. So in our design process, we want to make this as easy as humanly possible to find something similar to you. Now, we kept this relatively simple. So we said, OK, show us. Let people choose, oh, we have an office that's this many square feet. Okay, cool. So show us what you did in that. And here's Campari at 700 square meters. They have 40 employees. Let's go into the view more. Now, this page hasn't been done yet. This will be done soon. So this is not our design right now. This is the old one. But you can look at the images and go, wow, within that small amount of space, look how they made it feel so good. This is cool. That's the design I want. Or maybe you say, no, that's not it. Let's go back. But when you settle on something that you really, really like, then who else are you going to inquire from? And that's the point of this section. So this is probably enough for today to go on with. But if you look, ah, perfect form, actually. 
So here it tells you a little bit more about what stage we're in. Really, really strong form. And you'll notice all the text, very readable. We have a very clear information hierarchy. The human eye is just simply not going to read very much, so we keep it really short and really easy, lots of white space. And the images aren't trying to do too much. They just, they enhance, they don't steal from. And yet another case study, and look at the format, brief solution result. Hmm, does that look familiar? So today we've covered quite a lot of ground on our design philosophy. We are multi-award winning for our, not for the design of the pages. Anyone can make something look pretty and design is incredibly subjective. We are multi-award winning for the results, for the human psychology that we build into our work to generate strong outcomes. We specialize above all else in B2B, high ticket items, where there is a lot of anxiety and there is a lot of friction in the design process, sorry, in the buying process, and we design to that. That's not to say we don't do B2C. We have taken one electronics business from $50,000 a month to over a million dollars a month using exactly the same principles. And we take this and apply it to all of our advertising as well. But here's the trick that agencies never tell you. You can't do effective advertising without a really strong base. This website is your salesperson. And imagine if you were spending a million dollars to drive people through the doors of your bricks and mortar business, and then there was a salesperson in there who was just flipping everyone off and being really rude. How many sales would you make? Or if they were really arrogant, for instance. If you have a really strong website, Forget about SEO, forget about technical, just think about them as a salesperson that can get people to like them and trust them. How many sales are you going to make? This is the most important thing that we can recommend for you. For anyone that wants to do a page, who wants to improve their results, let us do one single page. Ideally, we'll use it as your homepage, either full-time, 100% of the time, or we can split the traffic and show the difference, we have a 100% success rate of increasing time on site and conversion rate, meaning the leads or the outcomes that it generates when we're allowed to do this. And almost all of that time, they then ask us to do the rest for the rest of the website. Any questions, let me know. I really hope this has been informative, so please feel free to leave feedback. Cheers.